Hello everyone, good morning. Happy hump day. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Hope everyone is doing well. Seems uh, looks like we've got some people just coming in. So we'll wait a few minutes. Today we're going to continue with our TOEFL practice. We'll begin at 8.15 and uh, just getting getting everything situated. I have uploaded the audio to Microsoft Teams in the temp folder. So if you want to download the audio, if this helps because of internet limitations, feel free to go ahead and begin downloading the audio at this time. Let me get the link for the, uh, the form, the Microsoft form. I'm going to share this in two places. I'll share the link in our chat in Google Meet, and I will share the link in Microsoft Teams. So here's the link. I just posted it in the chat. I'll post it in Microsoft Teams. Go ahead and try to open it up. Of course, it's not going to open until... 815, but go ahead and open up your browser to have it all ready. I really spend uh, some time before we get started here thinking about how you've taken notes in the past. I suggest that everyone take some notes of some kind. Uh, today, what I'd like to do is really focus on note taking. After we complete today's review, we're actually going to go back and listen to parts of the audio again and compare our notes. I'd like for us to compare each other's notes as to what you write down. So if you're writing in a regular notebook, that's probably the easiest, just on a piece of paper. Try to write something down. You know that you're going to get questions that relate to the general idea over or the overall point of the discussion. Okay, so... As you're re reading, and or as you're listening, I should say, uh, think about what the overall point of the conversation is or the lecture. Also, as you hear specific points, write down those specific points. A lot of times they'll use advanced vocabulary that you may not know what the word means, but most of the time you don't even need to know what the word means if you get the rest of the details. So sometimes you can infer, you can figure out what they're talking about without knowing every single word, the meaning of every word. Okay, so I think this is where note-taking, if it's done right, will help you, especially when maybe you don't understand all of the words that are being used. So think about the specific details that are being discussed. And uh, after we review, after we have our uh, review that'll take about an hour, we'll go back and uh, we'll look at how we took notes, okay? So again, I'm suggesting to everyone, try to write something down while you listen. This is called active listening. Active listening is actually participating, doing something while you're listening, okay? And... Uh, Taking notes while you're listening is a good example of active listening. It's, it's really what you're listening to. You're writing down certain notes. You're not writing down everything that you hear. You're writing down key ideas, key points, key vocabulary that you listen to, that you're listening to. This might even be uh, some when you detect, because sometimes questions will relate to, well, how does this person feel or how's what's you know what's the feeling or the attitude about a person so if you can imply in the moment how this person is feeling maybe it's a student or a, or a, a professor because a lot of these recordings are in a school context then that might also help right just you writing down okay the student is confused the student is frustrated right maybe that will help as well. All right, so we'll get started here in a few minutes. We've got about uh, about nine minutes or so. 
Anybody has any questions, feel free to jump right in. Unmute your microphone. We'll get started here shortly. Try to have everything set up again. Go ahead and download the, the audio if that helps. I'll obviously be playing the audio. I'll be broadcasting it to the whole group as well. So we'll get started here in uh, about nine minutes. Mitra, I have a question. Yes, go ahead. Uh, where do you say is the audio? It's in the temp folder in Microsoft Teams. And so if you go into okay. files, you should see a temp folder. And this is where I'm going to share all of the audio for each of the TOEFL uh, reviews that we have. And you should find it there. Yeah, I got it. Thank okay. you. You're welcome. Okay, guys, I'm going to play just a, a second or two of the audio. If you could just uh, confirm that you can hear the audio. Cuando entro el formulario, me dice que ya no se aceptan respuestas. Yeah, because... Uh, because it won't open until 8.15, okay? So maybe okay. refresh your browser at 8.15, and it should open. Okay. If it doesn't, of course, let me know. But usually what yes. what happens is I, I set it up, it's created, but I don't make it accessible, or you can't open it until 8.15. So let's wait till 8.15 if you, um, and hope that's probably why you can't open it up. Yes, sure. Thank okay. you. You're welcome. Looks like we have about 35, 36 of us online, 35 right now. Um, if, uh, if it's a problem, if, the, if your broadband or your internet connection uh, is limited, go ahead and download the audio from Microsoft Teams to your computer, and you can exit. You can leave this group. Okay, You don't have to stay in the group if you're listening and, and doing the exam kind of on your own, so to speak from your computer, all right? So the main thing is to reserve all resources so that it doesn't interfere with you completing the quiz, all right? So don't worry about trying to stay in the class if you're doing this on your own. We're all starting at 8.15, so we all should stop around the same time. So whenever you finish, just make sure you come back to class. We'll continue doing some other Activities. In fact, we'll be looking specifically at this TOEFL review that we're looking at today. We'll compare some notes about taking notes. Again, please take notes today. Try to write something down as you're listening to the audio and try to use those notes to help better answer the questions that you're presented. Okay, we'll start here in about four minutes. Uh, teacher, I just have a question, just to make sure. Yes. Uh, for download or downloading the audio in Microsoft Teams, it is double listening five, right? No, it's uh, listening six, I believe. It should should say TOEFL six. Six. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah, because I think it's missing here, so I don't know if. Um, yeah, because uh, this is not right now. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking. I'm looking in uh, Microsoft Teams right now under the temp, and it says TOEFL six, and it's an MP3 okay. file. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Okay, just to again restate what I mentioned earlier for those of you who are downloading the file, the audio file to your computer. You do not have to stay in this class. Just begin at 8.15 as the, the online form in Microsoft should be available as soon as 8.15 arrives. You should be able to open up the questions. So you can go ahead and begin if you're doing this on your own, on your computer with the downloaded audio. We're going to start as a group. I will... I will be playing the audio as well as I always do uh, to the whole class. Just make sure those of you who are taking this on your computer, who are downloading the audio file, they come back after you've completed the, um, the exam. 
make sure that ev- this is for everyone. Make sure that you post your responses by 9.15, okay, or before, not after 9.15, okay? Make sure that you post your responses before 9.15, all right? So it should be opening up here in just a moment, 9.14. Make sure that you have it already open on your browser, all right? So it is 8.15 now. Go ahead and refresh your browser. You may have to... Either refresh or close and open again, maybe. Depends. All right. I'll wait just a few more seconds to make sure everyone has the browser up. And let's begin.
Okay, guys. Uh, it's 9.02. Give you a few minutes to uh, submit your responses. Make sure that you submit before 9.15. I would go ahead and submit right now. Um, we'll take a short break. We'll come back at 9.10. Right now it's 9.02. Give you about eight minutes or so. Kind of uh, relax or get something to drink. Or we'll take a little break. We'll come back at 9.10. And I want to go over some of the questions, some of the audio again, and have a group discussion around some of the um, audio and some of the questions that we looked at today. Okay, so we'll take a brief break again at 9.10. We will come back and continue with the class. Make sure that uh, you've submitted your responses to today's TOEFL review. Okay, so we'll come back here in about seven minutes. All right, guys, it's uh, 910. Go ahead and unmute your mic and preferably your video if you want to turn your video on as well. Feel free to do so. Want to have kind of a group discussion about what we heard, at least some of the audio and some of the questions that we looked at today. And I want to focus a lot on the importance of taking good notes. All right, so... Go ahead and turn on your microphones. I'd like to get as many people into the conversation as possible. And I want to begin by thinking about the first audio. So take a look at your notes and share what you have in your notes. What was the first audio about? And rely on your notes. It's about a career fair. Like a student um, was asking for um, if he can participate, even if he is from the first year students. All right. All right. So check your check your notes. Maybe you have some mention of the first year student career fair. They used the phrase. Uh, I think that was the teacher. Maybe the student it was one of the first things the teacher said, and uh, the student came to the teacher and said something, maybe asked a question, and the professor replied, okay, shoot. What, is that, what does that mean? Okay, shoot. That you can say your, like, um, um, dudas que tenía, o no, porque tenía dudas sobre qué, entonces como que eh, podía responder. Right, so if somebody says, okay, shoot, they just mean, okay, go ahead. Go ahead and ask your question, right? It's an idiomatic expression just simply means go ahead and, in this case, ask your question. Go ahead and do what you were asking to do. Um, anybody else? What else do you recall from your notes, from your memory about the first audio? Anybody else? What else do you recall from the first audio? Um, that he has questions about the job, salary, working conditions, and opportunity for advance. All right. All right. So questions about what to, what, how to prepare for a job fair, maybe an interview? Yes. All right. And anything else that you remember about maybe the, the student? The student is a first-year student. What's uh, what's the student's major? Accounting. Mm -hmm. So remember the word major. All right? What's uh, major? What is what is your major? The university. The Universidad Autónoma de Aguascalientes. What's your major? No, English language teaching. English language teaching. And what field or what career are you pursuing? What may what career are you pursuing? No, I'm becoming a teacher. Mm -hmm. yeah. Maybe it's to become a teacher. Maybe it's Maybe it's to be a translator, right? Maybe it's just to work at a company 
to help with interpreting services, right? So be careful with the term career. That's a professional career. That's the job that someone does versus a major. That's a, an academic term for what you're, you're majoring in. You can say, I'm majoring in English language teaching. If someone ever asks you, what's your major? You say, my major is this, or I'm majoring in this field, this, this major. Okay, so it can be a verb <clears throat> or it can be a noun. <clears throat> All right, so <clears throat> check your notes. I'm sharing my screen. Hopefully you can see my screen. And... This probably doesn't help because my penmanship, the way that I write, is horrible. But this is what I wrote. All right, I took notes. Right, it's sloppy. Right, it's probably there's misspelled words. Some of it doesn't make sense. But as I'm writing, <clears throat> this does help me go back and think about what was said. What's your major? I wrote down accounting, prepare questions, salary, working conditions, tailor questions to the interview. What does this mean, to tailor questions to the interview? What's it mean to tailor questions? Any ideas? Like prepare questions or thinking on that? It's it's similar. You are preparing questions, but if I say, uh, let's take another context. You're going to be a teacher. Let's say you're teaching kindergarten students. And let's say half the day you're teaching kindergarten students, and then the second half of the day you're teaching high school students. And I might say, I might ask you, how do you tailor your class with your kinder kindergarten students versus how do you tailor your class to the high school students? So what does to tailor mean in this case? Tailor questions. What's a synonym for tailor? <clears throat> well, for example, in the... In this case that you said, uh, like, I don't know how to say if, I don't know, well, I don't know if it is correct to say personalize the questions. Mm -hmm. For example, you're not going to question about um, fractions to a uh, kindergarten uh, children, no? That's right. Well, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Uh, to personalize is a very, it's a good synonym, personalize questions. You might even think of it as adapting questions, but personalizing really is a, a good synonym for tailor. You're personalizing it to, in this case, the interview, or in the case of teaching a class to kindergarten students, you're, the teacher is personalizing or adapting the questions for children versus young adults, All right? So, so take a look at your notes. Think about... How you took notes, uh, that's a given. This was another a phrase that stood out that I wrote out. That's a given. What does that mean? That's a given. Any ideas? No. If I... If I say, to do well in, Eng in listening and speaking class, it's important to wake up on time. And then somebody might say, well, that's a given. I don't know if it refers like um, something that you have to do. If, okay, so... It's, it is something that you have to do, but the, the, the phrase, it's a given, means that it's obvious, that it's given. If it's given, it means 
everyone already knows it. It's like, it's, it's obvious, it's clear that that's what you have to do. So if somebody says, well, you have to get up on time to do well in listening and speaking class, you can't oversleep, you have to wake up on time. Somebody might say, well, that's clearly, that's obvious, right? It, that's, it's a given. So th that's a very common uh, phrase to just simply mean that's obvious, right? That's obvious. Hey, sure. Yes. Um, can I say something? Sure. <laughs> um, even if I like take notes, because yesterday, um, the, yesterday TOEFL, I didn't take notes and this time I do. Um, the result was the same <laughs> with me. Um, I tried to um, take like the important stuff that I heard mm -hmm. or at least like the what I can write because I it's like a little bit difficult to hear what they're saying in the audio and to write it at the same time. So I don't like have saqué lo mismo que ayer, 56% del TOEFL. Aha. So my first thought, my first idea here is that just because you got the same score today versus what the, the last score, that's a very small, what we call a sample size. Like it, that's a very, we don't want to reach a lot of conclusions simply from two exams that you took two days apart, if that makes sense. That's, that's my first thought. Um, okay. My second thought is that that I understand maybe that it's difficult to take notes while you're listening. But what I am asking you guys to do is to make the attempt to try, to try to do this. Um, knowing that it may feel uncomfortable, knowing that, that you're struggling maybe with a lot of the vocabulary and the meaning, I understand. Um, what I... What I want you to start to think about and get used to, especially in the TOEFL listening, are different parts of the audio where parts of the audio are, for example, sometimes when I'm writing out these notes, I, I know that I can write because what they're saying are just examples of things that I know that they're saying, if that makes sense. Like they're, they're just saying there's only a few key moments in every audio that are, are different, that are, that really change. And, and one of the key ways of uh, looking at that or listening for is when there are contractions that show contrast, when they say, but, right? Or they may say, however, right? There are certain words that jump out that say, okay, there's an, there's an exception or something's different or there's a change. And so then you can kind of pay attention at that point and say, oh, okay, th this is something contrasting or, or whatever. Now, I know this is hard at, when we're just getting used to listening to these audios, but what I'm uh, suggesting to you guys is to try to take notes. Uh, everyone's going to be taking notes differently, but I want you to pay attention to what works for you and, and what doesn't work for you, but also realize that just because from one exam to the next, you did something completely different, but you scored the same, doesn't necessarily mean that what you did did or did not work, okay? Because again, it's just, there's a lot of factors. It's a different exam. Maybe you feel better. You're more alert today than you were the last class or vice versa. I mean, there's just a lot of variables. So just by taking notes, I want you to try, try to take notes when you're listening, right? And when you're, um, when you're trying to get uh, the information. I'm gonna try to, sh to uh, play the audio here, and I don't know if I can do this. Can you guys share your screen or not? Do you have an option at the bottom of your screen to share? Um, yes, yes. 
All right, before I play the audio, would anyone want to share, because I'm just curious, if you want to share your notes, can you share your notes from, oh, but you don't have it, no, I don't think there's a way to do it, or with your camera, yeah, try, try your camera, if you guys can turn your cameras on and um, show some of the notes that you're taking, I'd be interested in, to see those. It is, um, I even, um, invent like uh, words. <laughs> what do you mean by inv invent words? Um, for example, in the part of the, um, when they talk about the Sahara, uh -huh. y hablan sobre como los egipcios, en vez de poner egipcios, porque yo estaba usando como inglés y español, o sea, si no sabía cómo se escribía en inglés, pero sabía right. cómo se traducía, cuál era la traducción en español, lo escribía rápido. Right. Um, puse egipcianos. No sé por qué puse egipcianos right. en vez de egipcios. Pero right. bueno. And and believe me. And right. at this point, I'm not even looking. I'm not even interested in. I mean, of course, I want you to try to write in English, right? But you know, if you're writing in Spanish, you're writing in Spanish. But just try to, you know, because sometimes, uh, right now, it may cause it's more work to think in English, right? When you get more advanced in, in your English proficiency, it's going to be actually more work to try to translate it. It's going to be easier just to think of it in English. Um, but yeah, so I noticed that uh, Paulina has a tendency to write out her, her method of writing. It looks like, at least from what I can see, is like almost a paragraph. It's like sentences and sentences and sentences. So if that works for her, that's great. If you contrast that, I don't know, Andrea, can you show you show us yours? I don't know if we can see it. Right, so it looks like Andrea's is more like how I write. It's like uh, just all over the place. It's like a list. And <laughs> right, and, and that's and that's that's uh certainly valuable too, right? It's like you just write out whatever you can you get, whatever you can capture. Um anybody else want to share your notes? Um, if I can, like, um, say some examples of what I write, right? Sure. <laughs> like, sure, for sure. example, um, here in about um, the lecture of creative writing. Sorry, can um, you can you repeat um, that again? You're cutting out a little um, bit, uh, Paulina. Puse, eh, John, Mary, Teresa, y puse como tres de lo que se supone como... Uh, sorry, como que I'm sure you're saying something bien, super important, momento, but I can't, it's cutting out for me. I don't sea, know if it's no, cutting out for everybody. No puse tal cual como... Um, <laughs> I don't know if she can hear me. So can you um can you hear me? Yeah, can you try start again? Sorry, it was cutting out so much I couldn't really get the the idea that you were saying. Can you try again? Oh no worries. Um in la lectura de creative writing, yo puse por ejemplo cuando dio el ejemplo el profesor sobre uh, the three friends that it was John, Mary, and Teresa. And I put like just like the faces de lo que estaba describiendo, de que por ejemplo John estaba um, como um, upset, así dijo. Uh, Mary was calm and Teresa was like um, finding a solution, I think. Y solo puse como las caritas, o sea, no puse como oraciones como tal, pero sí intenté como poner como um, key keywords. Right, <clears throat> right. So we're jumping to the last audio now. Creative writing, and it's the penultimo. Oh yeah, sorry. Yeah, the the second to the last. Right, and yeah. So I don't want to. I want to stick to the first audio for now. But yeah, the the point here is that we're all finding ways. If you're drawing uh, some sort of image imagery that helps you connect the dots. You know, in my case, I draw draw arrows sometimes uh, because I'm trying to connect ideas that I'm listening to, 
right? So I use arrows to connect ideas. Sometimes I underline certain words that I think are important. I know I underlined no stereotypes under the creative writing one because that stood out for me. Like one of the pitfalls they mentioned was no stereotypes. And so that stood out for me. All right. But let's go back to the first audio because I want um, – anybody else want to share before we listen to the audio besides Andrea and Paulina? I only wrote keywords. Um, okay. Can we okay. see? Let's see. The... Um, All right. And it looks like you drew some columns. Is that right? Or some sort of like sections? Is, or is that based on the listening? Um, for example, this is the audio number one, this is the other audio. Okay. All right. And is that working for you, uh, Di? Do you think that's helping or not? Um, yes, but my score is long. Um. Right. And, and, and I know that, uh, you know, we all want higher scores like one day to the next, but just be patient, <laughs> right? Be patient. Don't just the only thing that I um, noticed is that first I, like, estaba muy confiada, ¿sabe? O sea, como hizo la pregunta ahí el, en el TOEFL y yo dije, ah, pues es esto. Pero también me ayudó como mucho a memorizar más sobre el texto mientras lo escribía. Me lo, como que me funciona más eso, eh, escribir, como que me ayuda a memorizar más a pesar de que lo estoy escuchando. So, are no, you... Are you, so are you guys reading the questions, all the questions before the audio or while you're listening to the audio or not? A veces. Cuando me da el tiempo. Does that help or is it confusing? Confuso. <laughs> so, I mean, here's, I mean, there's two ways to do it, right? For some people, maybe it helps to read the questions, but that's only if you feel that you can read it fast enough and understand it fast enough, right, to to benefit from knowing what the question is before you listen. My suggestion is if you have a problem understanding the question, reading it, and you, you're not able to read the whole, all the answers, um, two things. Number one, don't worry about don't worry about the answers. Just focus on the questions, first of all. So you're not reading the whole thing. You're just reading the next four or five questions only and not the responses. Okay, so that will speed up the process. If you still think, no, I, I can't even read all of the questions before the, the audio or while the audio is playing, then I wouldn't do it. I would ignore all the questions completely and focus on taking notes, focusing on just trying to understand as much as possible the audio and not spend time reading. Okay, so you evaluate your own personal preference and your skill sets right now and and try different things, right? Try different things. If, if it's been confusing in the past, say, okay, I'm not going to read any question. I'm just going to focus on taking really good notes and listening intently. And what, what writing does, what taking notes does for me, I think, is that it keeps you in the, the game. It keeps you in listening. Because if we don't take notes, it's at least for me, if I don't take notes, even whether it's regardless of the language, if I'm not taking notes actively trying to understand something, I easily get distracted. I easily am starting to think about what I'm going to do on the weekends or what I have to do tonight or whatever. I get sidetracked. I'm just, and all of a sudden I'm just listening and I fit, realize that a minute just went by and I haven't been paying attention to what, what's been said. So what, what taking notes does for me is it keeps me in there, keeps me trying to listen constantly, constantly, constantly listening and knowing that I'm not understanding everything, but I'm trying to get as much as I can from the audio. All right, so let's take a look here. Let's see if I can do this. If it doesn't work, try something else. But I'm going to try to 
play my audio. I'm going to pre present my screen here. Teacher, I have a question. Yeah. For example, um, well, for me, uh, as I think Paulina said, it is hard for me to be concentrating like on the audio and at the same time being taking notes. So I think that, well, that's what I'm doing. Um, after the quiz, after the test, after the topic, what I like to do is listen to the audio again and like take my notes because like in the moment that I'm answering the, the topic, I can't be taking notes and be like concentrating on what I'm listening to. So do you think it's another good way to do it? Like play the audio after and then taking notes? So what you're saying is you like to take notes. Um, I'm not sure I, I quite understand. So you, you're during the quiz, you like to take notes after the audio. Yeah, after like after I already answered the topic because I cannot be concentrating doing like the three things. At the uh, okay. Same time. Yeah, I mean I don't know. I mean the the the. The point that I want to try to make here is I, I want to try to offer you guys a strategy to help you better answer the question. So my question to you, uh, Monse, would be whether or not answering the questions at the very end of the whole exam after you've answered the questions helps you answer the questions. And if you've already answered the questions, I don't know. I yeah, think I, that cheese refers like before, no? Yeah, I don't, no, I'm not sure. I, Maybe it. No, because, uh, for example, I uh, I discovered today that when I'm paying too much attention in the audio, like, I know many, like, many vocabulary, and I understand almost everything. So I do better in the TOEFL. But to take notes, uh, I like to do it after the TOEFL because I can like, I don't know how to say it in English, como reescuchar the audio again and then take my notes. So I guess the question uh, well, would, um, go ahead, Paulina. Mm -hmm. No, like you just like teacher, I just like just, um, como que nos sugiere que tomemos notas, pero no es como obligatorio, sí. O sea, es como una manera para nosotros poder contestar más rápido el TOEFL si es que nos sirve. Por ejemplo, o lo que entendí, Monse, le sirve más simplemente escuchar el audio y contestarlo así. The, the, I guess the question would be, yeah, so note-taking is a strategy that's been researched and, you know, it's certainly a one way that you can... To, as you're listening, write down certain key words. And I guess the, the question would be, if your method, Monse, maybe that helps you more with, with subsequent exams, maybe exams that come up in the future. I mean, I, I'm, I, I guess my question to you is like, does that, I'm not sure if that helps you answer the questions by taking notes afterwards. I don't know. You know, uh, maybe you can answer. No, that. Actually, uh, taking notes after the TOEFL it helps me to like get more vocabulary. Okay, yeah, and and there's a benefit for that. I guess what I am trying to suggest here to you guys is the the value in being able to take some notes during the audio during, while it's happening in real time in order for you to rely on those notes to better answer the questions. That's that's the my suggestion. And I totally get that this might be different, new, or maybe you're not used to it. And you might just say, oh, ese no me sirve porque no puedo sacar notas así en escuchar la misma tiempo. So maybe that's true, but what I'm what I'm encouraging you guys to do is to try to try it maybe it's something really new and but before you say no ese no me sirve maybe 
it's we can try it for a while and see what works because we just looked at two different three examples we looked at andrea Dai, and paulina's and each one of those examples they took notes differently right you can compare the three and they're, they're really different and so what i'm what i want you to do is first of all realize there's not one way to do it and you might even have images like uh, paulina was mentioning i mean it could be totally different but it's 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 active. It's you're doing something. You're doing a behavior while you're listening, and it keeps you engaged in that listening process. And I and I get that sometimes you lose some information when you're writing, but like I said, and this is what I wanted to try to show with show you guys by example that part of the some of the audios are more important than others. And I can I can write certain things and listen and say, oh, they're just providing examples. Because a lot of times these audios will say the same thing three or four different ways. And that's by design. Especially for English language learners, for them to say, okay, this is one way to say the same thing. Here's another way to say the same thing. Here's a third way. Sometimes I, I think I heard three or four different ways of saying the same thing in these audios. And so... It's for you to capture at least one of those so you can get one of those. And then you write down that thing, that idea, and then you rely on that. When they ask questions, you go back, you can look at your notes, and hopefully that will help you better answer the question. All right, so um, I'm going to play an audio here. Just Can you guys tell me if you can hear the audio? Listen to a conversation between a student. Can you hear it? Yes. 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 All right. So let's take, um, let's take, uh, let's take this first audio. Before we play the audio, can you guys see my screen? Still, hopefully. Yes. All right. Yes. So here's here's the first question. Why does the student go to the career services office? What do you think the correct answer is? You can either unmute your mic or post it in the chat. What do you think? And there's a misspelled word, advice. To get advice about interviewing at the career fair. I remember that I answered with the first one. To find out he is allowed to attend the career fair? Yeah. All right. Let's take a listen. And an employee in the university's career services office. Hi. Do you have a minute? Sure. How can I help you? I have a couple questions about the career fair next week. Okay, sure. So at this point, maybe you just write down career fair. That's what I did. Right? You just write down the context. And just by writing down those two words, career fair, you're, you're remembering a lot of things that are related to the audio about this phrase. But it, but it tells you something at that moment, right? So Monse and those who are having some issues taking notes while you're listening, you're not writing. I mean, in my case, I almost writing constantly, right? As soon as I finish something, I'm trying to write something else, right? But maybe in your case, you're not writing constantly, but you're really trying to write as much as possible and just focus on the key words. Um, well, are seniors the only ones who can go? I mean, you know, they're finishing school this year and getting their degrees and everything. And, well, it seems like businesses would want to talk to them and not first-year students like me. No. Now, here, first, so right there, we know the context. So whatever you write that describes that context. So maybe you don't write keywords that come from the audio, but you write the situation. That's another way that you can take notes. So you could say, once... Wants to attend. First-year student wants to attend, right? For example, in your notes. 
you don't have to write any more than that, but it, it says, okay, first year student wants to attend. We know it's a career fair because you already wrote down career fair, right? So I've, I've only wrote, written out maybe five, six words, but it still provides enough context for me to kind of understand what's going on. And that's the key when you're writing and you're figuring out, okay, what should I say in my notes? What should I include? No, the career fair is open to all our students, and we encourage anyone who's interested to go check it out. Open to all. Open to all. Three words. You could just write that. Open to all. So it's open to all. First year student. He's asking about, okay, so you're, you're piecing all of this together like a puzzle. Well, that's good to know. You've seen the flyers and the posters around campus, I assume. Sure. Can't miss them. I mean, they all say where and when the fair is, just not who should attend. Where and when, but it doesn't say who should attend. For me, that's key. How? So who should attend? This whole thing is about who should, who can attend or who should attend, right? And that's where when you start getting used to these audios, you start to find, okay, that, that's key. But it doesn't say this. It says this and this, but it doesn't say this. That's a clue. That is like, okay, ding, 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 that's going to be on there. There's going to be a question about that when they say this and this, but not this. This happens a lot in these, these audios. But it doesn't say this or, or however this. Actually, they do, but it's in the small print. Oh, we should probably make that part easier to read, shouldn't we? I'll make a note of that right now. So, do you have any other questions? Yes, actually, I do now. Uh All right, so do you have any other questions? So here, what was the first question? What was the first question? This audio. What do you guys think? What was the first question? In the form or the, the set in the audio? Okay. Anyone else? Okay, guys, so just glance down here at the clock. All right, so it looks like we're over. Um, we're almost out of time here. So, in fact, we are out of time. Um, I want to spend a little bit more time doing this. I want to dig deeper into some of these audios, and I want to have some more group conversations. I really want these group conversations to be as dynamic as possible. I want more people to participate. I think you're going to get what you – you're going to get out of these conversations what you put into it. So I want you to take a look at your uh, your notes. Tomorrow I want to spend some more time on this audio and uh, really talk about trying to find key aspects of these audios so that you can rely on those and really reflect a lot on taking notes. Again, and I know that maybe you're not used to taking notes, but I really encourage you to to do this because when you go to, uh, you know, and you're, when you go to, into your advanced courses in the BA, just being able to take notes is a very important skill set. And sometimes it, it's the difference between doing well in a class and not doing well is how you take notes. And so this is really more than anything an exercise in how to take notes and trying to listen and get those key aspects of, of the audio. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and stop there, guys. I didn't realize we got uh, caught up here on time. And uh, we'll continue a little bit more tomorrow, d digging into these audios and trying to understand a little bit more the questions that are being asked uh, so that we can really focus on uh, some normal patterns that occur when uh, applying the TOEFL exam. All right, guys, we'll stop there for today. Have a good day, and we will talk to you tomorrow. Thank you, Thank teacher. You, Thank you, teacher. With you. Thank you. Thank you, teacher. Thank you, teacher. Bye.
Bye.